This is a getting to know video number two on the DSF System 2000. We are going to focus on the booklet maker and the trimmer, the 120, 120T here. Uh, we'll begin with the first thing you'll notice, which is uh, this booklet maker's ready. All the guides are out. And the end feed rollers assembly is back. As soon as I was to touch start, everything will adjust in. And it'll just start rotating immediately. It should be helpful if you needed to, uh, say, insert handsets that it got dropped for whatever reason. Say, uh... Yeah, a set of three got dropped a couple of times for whatever reason, or you just need to stitch it and fold it. Or hand stitch it would be fine, too. Uh, you just feed it in right here. It'll take it, and it'll stitch it, fold it, trim it, and go. Same thing again. Stitch, fold, trim, and out. Um, sometimes you will have some sets, uh, sheets get stuck together. They drop down to the bottom like you see a couple right now. And um, you'll have to hand feed them back through rather than separate them all out and do everything you wanted to do. It's a good, fast way to go ahead and feed them through, and then you don't have to actually have the DSF 2000 running at this moment. You only need the sets that uh, fell or you need to have stitched. You can also set up and do an in-stitch mode, and uh, if you've only got, like, say, five or six sets of in-stitch, you can set it up and just run it like that, and just run the five or six sets, and go on with it. Or, say, if um, your digital has a booklet maker on it already, you didn't want to run this, um, but you had a couple that got messed up, you can go ahead and do them this way. Uh, it's, a, it's a nice option, a nice feature to go ahead and erase some of this stuff. What I do normally, if I was to say I have a set stuck in there, I would open and close this lid. And what that will do is it will back everything up so I can get in there and, and get all the set out. The other thing you'll see here is the, um, the cartridge heads. Uh, if you need to change these out, you simply push this red towel down. If the empty cartridge head pops out, put a new one in. Um, it's not going to be real easy to reuse them. Once you push it out, that's it. That cartridge head's not going to want to go back in. You can actually jam it all up trying to force it to go back in. So uh, if you're going to change it, you need to make sure you need to change it. Other than that, don't pop it off just to look inside there because you're not going to be able to use that cartridge head anymore. Uh, of course, these are staple heads, they're not stitch heads. Um, cartridge staples come out. Uh, they're not nearly as tough as a stitch head is, but they're a lot easier to work on, a lot easier to work with. They're also really light and uh, a lot less expensive as well. Uh, the other thing you'll notice right here, you have your white dials. That's how you would move this. You would, you would take this thumb screw off here. You slide back here, we'll go move with it. You slide it where you need it to, you tighten it back down. You have a tool for moving the uh, clinchers. You just slide it in, push it down, and it slides. Um, this is removable. Take these thumb screws off. This entire assembly right here comes off. Uh, for cleaning is mainly what it's there for. Uh, you're going to have to clean these fairly often. Um, a lot of people just let it go. The dust builds up, the toner builds up, the ink builds up, and then next thing they know it won't run. It, it's just it needs clean. There's, there's no substitution for cleaning it. You can't get around it. There's no other way to do it. You just need to clean it. That, that's all there is to it. 90% uh, of the time we go in, people are telling me they won't run at all. They're just dirty. But as soon as you get done cleaning them back up, they come back right back to life and run perfectly fine. Uh, you have an adjustment right here. See this corner right here? That orange dial in the center there, that adjusts your fold pressures. Uh, heavy booklet, small booklet, it's just how far apart the fold rollers. See those two stainless steel fold rollers right there? It's how far apart they're going to be spaced. You have them on both sides. Make sure you always adjust evenly, otherwise you're going to damage the rollers being set in there at, a, at an angle. Other than that, there's no mechanical adjustments to make on that. Um, you have your options here.
first one you're going to notice is, is uh, ready. That's it's a ready code. It can be run right now. Uh, output mode, booklet. Um, you could run in stitching like we were talking about. The only difference is instead of coming out through the trimmer here, it'll come out underneath the trimmer into this little tray down here to be caught. Next option is paper size. Uh, just like the DSF 2000, it has all the standard sizes input. You can also move over to custom size. Uh, number of sheets, if you were hand feeding, this is what it would do. It would, it would recognize it by sheets. Uh, again, like I said, custom size, you can input your custom size. Line adjustment, uh, it's just going to move a fraction of a millimeter each time. To tighten up on the sides of the back of the paper. That's what it's there for. Other settings, staple sensor on, tone on, LCD setting, it's just going to be how dark the screen is, millimeter inch setting, just what it says, millimeter inches, uh, it's all what your size is, and then done, and when you're done it'll say Booklet Maker Ready, letter, which is what we're doing, your next set, uh, item is your trimmer. This trimming letter ready. Um, other than that, you don't really have to do much with this. The booklet maker or the DSF always control this. The only thing you're going to have to adjust the side of this item here is this, this back piece right here. You'll see it shows down for thin stock, up for uh, heavier stock or heavier booklet. And it's just that simple. Down or up. Um, when cleaning in here, you want to take very, very, very amount, a lot of a caution. Usually, the trimmer blade is down. Sometimes it might be up. You want to have to be very cautious around that blade. It is very dangerous. Um, whoever was to change out that blade needs to have a lot of knowledge of how to work on trimmers, not not just guillotine cutters, trimmer blades. Um, you have two blades. They're both mashed to each other. They both have to be changed at the same time, as well as. They both have to be set absolutely right, otherwise the $600, $700 set of blades is just gone. One pull and the blade is completely gone and you have to get a new one. So you need to have somebody who knows what they're doing with a, with a trimmer. Uh, if you've ever set a trimmer blades before, you're okay here. The only thing you want to take care of too is to is make sure you see the little white guides right here. Uh, a little touch of grease probably once every six months or so. I mean, you might get away a little longer, maybe a little less. It all depends on how much you run it. If you're running it every day, I do it once every three months. If you're running it twice a week, once every six months. If it sets for weeks without being run, once a year. Um, again, keeping it clean. Just, just keep all the debris and everything out of here. Trimmers get clogged up with, with paper scrap, especially little strips. Keep it out. A vacuum cleaner is going to help you. best thing to do is just unplug it. Vacuum out all the, the garbage, wipe it all off, and get back to work, and it's going to work out perfectly for you. As you see, always make sure it's clear before it starts again. So you just get to go ahead, it'll drop the blade. It does everything it can to protect itself as well as you, but nothing's perfect, and nobody's perfect, so you want to make sure you. Uh, Keep everything clean and free and don't leave any wrenches or tools in there that will damage the system. Same goes with any other machine you've ever got in your shop. Always be careful when you're done working or cleaning on something. Everything's always cleaned out. Okay, what we're going to do is go ahead and run now. Again, with this here, the, um, the, the DSF-2000 takes control. It's the boss. first do a, just like in the first video, our first move is to do a, a uh, calibrate set. It's going to count how many sheets, and it's also going to count the cover, and it's going to make sure it gets going. After that, we go ahead, we hit start, and it takes over. We just have 2,000 states in control. Notice 
it stitches, and it drops down slightly, and folds. All it's doing is moving about two inches to the stops on the folder. Then it comes up out of the folder, and then straight into the trimmer here. This is done trimming it. It's going to exit out onto the excavator, which uh, this does not have a long excavator. You're going to have to, you know, kind of keep an eye on it. If you move it a lot faster, well, this is, this is pretty much pretty close to as fast as it's going to go. So you might want to have somebody keeping an eye on it. They don't have to actually stand here and babysit it, but just be real close to it. Don't let it overpile books. Make a mess. It does a really good job. It moves really fast. It's really clean, nice, crisp books. Well, that was the end of our count. This will conclude our digital video. Any questions, please feel free to call. Thank you.